Did you get to see the uh, the Auburn Georgia game from last night? And aside from Anthony Edwards, what was Georgia maybe doing to to kind of put the, the clamps on Auburn a little bit? Well, obviously we watched that game, and and uh, you know Georgia played well. Not to take anything about away from them, but uh, we know Auburn's down a player too. But you know, welcome to that club. We've been there all year too. But uh, it's just this time of year. I think it's college basketball. It's uh, the SEC. It's everywhere where this time of year games are close. You go back and look at them from the start. It, uh, it seems like everything comes down to a possession game in most situations. Yeah. How different is Auburn without a coil in there? Well, they still have good players. I mean, there's no doubt they still do. And I mean, they're they're different than they were a year ago, where they're not making normally as many threes as they made, where they're relying more on an inside game and uh, mid-range game and um, you know they're capable like any team of having big shooting nights and but they more of a you know inside out team than they were a year ago and uh, they're they're a tough team to defend they've shot poorly from three-point range the last two games do you see defense is doing anything differently against Auburn? I, I, no i don't i think like i said a year ago they they had a guy they shot made shots i mean one thing I know about that, I mean, you guys have watched us this year, and we talk a lot about the the, the problems that Jordan Bowden has had this year. And but we also know that his numbers aren't indicative of how good a shooter he is. And I'm sure that Bruce and other coaches might feel that way. And uh, it's the open shots that you know there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, teams are going to guard at this level. They're going to try to defend players uh, who they think can really make shots, but. The other night in our scout report, we had a guy that was what we would consider a driver first. And so you have different closeouts. You know, you know, some guys you're gonna run off the line, sometimes you're gonna have a shorter closeout. Some hit and pop back, but uh, after a guy makes one, you're not quite sure after he makes two, the whole scout report goes out where we're gonna play this guy because tonight he's got it going on. And I think that can happen anywhere in college basketball where a guy that maybe hasn't shot well can get going and you've got to be able to adjust throughout the game. Are you as concerned about their ability to drive the basketball as you are the threes? Well, they've always done that. They, they, they do a very good job of, of getting into the gaps, you know, getting into, trying to get into the rotation. And but they are really putting the ball into uh, Wiley's hands a lot. You know, they, they're looking for ways to get him involved, and I'm sure that uh, they'll do that against Saturday. Albert and LSU, man, you're the top of the league all year, but they've kind of struggled a little bit lately. Seems a lot of bubble teams in the league. Cause what stands out about the SEC this year versus maybe, versus maybe previous seasons you've been there? Again, I don't I don't think it's any different. The fact that, you know, we had our league as a whole lost some key players and the new guys come in and, and you know, scheduling has a lot to do with you know how you know, like we're getting into arguably I can't imagine anybody playing a tougher having a tougher finish than we do coming down the stretch and that's why early when you feel like things are in your favor that you need to grab some, you don't get them, it makes it difficult. And But uh, I, I just think that this time of year, wins are hard to get. They are hard to get. I don't care who you're playing because everybody's gotten better. And uh, even though some, like I, I think our guys still need to break through in, in some areas. And I think that's true of, uh, like I, I would think that Tom Cream thought last night that some things that he'd been looking for finally happened for him. And I think that as coaches this time of year, we're all looking for that and hope that we've got some level of consistency. You talked about the opportunities that await you at this kind of stretch to finish the season. Do you like having the schedule set up this way or would you prefer all these couple <coughs> games being spread out a little more or does it make any difference to you? Well, it, it is what it is. So there's, it is what it is right now. So we have to deal with it. Uh, you know, I, I think scheduling is just tough when it's not a, you know, home and home series every year in the way the league's set up. And, and I, I know everything's put into a computer. I do know that in terms of Tuesday game. I mean, there's so much that goes into a program like that. And some years you think it's, uh, you know, it, it could be different this way, that way, but it is what it is. And we all go through times of our schedule where they're, it's difficult. So I, I don't even look at it, think about it. It's just there and let's, let's go deal with it. Coach, you get the point now, like at Euros and Olivia, that you're kind of giving them a few minutes in the first half to, to see what they've got and decide what you're going to do the rest of the game. Is that what you know like? what? I'll, I'll tell you. Here's how, here's how it works. You go back to the game against Vanderbilt the other night. We start the game with John Fulkerson missing a wide open layup. Then the very next play, Jordan Bowden misses a wide open three. And when you miss layups early, it, it can take the wind out of your cell. It really can. And now, instead of us having a, a lead where we could have maybe, it could be a, a eight-four lead. And we have these rotation patterns we want to go to. 
but instead of being 8-4, it's 4-4. Four, four. And it's tough to put Urosh in the game when you're there or behind and expect him to, to do some things. That's why I, I'm, I was upset with our starters because the fact that they didn't come out the way they needed to, it put us in a different different light. And it's Uros didn't have November and December to play through mistakes. Because right now, and, and I'm not saying uh, mistakes, the pressure that he's under to go in and perform really well. It's not fair to put him in that all the time because it, you worry about it affecting him for two, three games down the road. And so we need everybody to do their job. He's, go, he's got to play. Going forward, he and Olivier, both of them have to help us. I mean, John Fulkerson needs rest. There's no question about it. But John Fulkerson's got to do his job from the very beginning and as opposed to waiting to the halftime where now he's, it's, he's got to play. He's got to produce. So that's – it's a combination of a lot of things that happen throughout games. And But to really answer your question is we need Urosh and we and, – and I like to be able to let him play more and play through some, uh, some mistakes or whatever you want to call it. But the fact is, you can't let that game get away from you in the first half. And really kind of on that same topic, Devante seems like he's maybe gotten a little past that. Is that yeah, I think, well, I think he has, but he didn't play the other night again because when he, he got a little bit too comfortable, he got out of his role just a little bit. And again, it starts, you can't let that thing snowball and get away from you because it's hard to get it back. But, uh, but I think he's done, he had had five or six games where he played really well, and uh, he took a quick three that, again, an air ball that wasn't even close. And, uh, and it wasn't a good shot. It really wasn't And uh, at that point in time. And so, but again, that's part of it. But, he, but he's got himself on the floor because he had done exactly what we needed him to do. And, uh, and again, he'll come back. I mean, I mean, he hasn't hurt or confidence, anything like that. It's just those other two post guys are in a much different situation. We're getting onto that good start. I would imagine it's more of a premium on the road, like you are just saying. It is. I mean, it, it's, it's important in every game. And again, it's not, it's not, I talk about making shots. It's 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 the energy, it's the effort that where we know that hey, he's got it. Or he doesn't. I mean, we know these guys so well. We know their body languages. We can tell when they're locked in. Uh, just like at, uh, when we were at uh, at South Carolina, I, I heard one of the coaches say, "Man, I don't know if he's got it tonight." And I immediately stood up, and he wasn't even talking to me. I just heard it. And I said to E, "Hey, man, these guys are questioning whether you got it or not." But just like that. Something happened, and uh, and I think sometimes players don't realize it. And but he but he definitely took it to another level, and that's what you hope. And and uh, but wherever you play, you've got to at this time of year, you, it's hard it's hard to win. But you've got to try to do everything you can to get it going in your direction. When it comes to closing out a game, is it just simply about playing smarter? Well, I thought the other night we showed how immature we were because uh, think about it. It's been a long time since these guys have had a a lead where. Uh, and again, I thought they let down. I thought they uh, thought the game was over. Uh, like uh, Santi was tired and he threw a pass and we had plenty of timeouts. Purposely with young group, I like to keep, uh, save timeouts for the end of the game because I know that they're gonna need them there more than any point in time. We had the timeouts, Jalen got trapped right here, did the worst thing he could do, put the ball over your head and try to throw the ball to the middle. And other than that, he had played really well. And then uh, Eve, all he had to do was, I don't care if you got a lead, or you don't in that situation, you know, when we're ahead, all he had to do was pick up the ball. And instead he tried to, I think he was going down to try to dunk the ball and he got a tip from behind. And those are plays that, one, he hasn't been in that situation too much. And what I expect from that is that we're not going to make that mistake again. And what we have, what we have to clean up is the last two games in the last four minutes, we've turned the ball over too, too many too many times where they have been unforced. And that's what we've got to fix. It seems like Auburn's been a tough matchup the past couple of years. Is there a common thread between no, They're good. I mean, they're a good team. They were final four team last year. They're good. Thanks, Joe.